Rumi. Jalaluddin Muhammad Rumi, also known as Jalaluddin Muhammad Baki, Mevlana slash Maulana, our master, Mevlevi slash Malawi, my master, and more popularly simply as Rumi, September 30, 1207, December 17, 1273, was a 13th century Persian poet, jurist, Islamic scholar, theologian, and Sufi mystic originally from Greater Khorasan. Rumi's influence transcends national borders and ethnic divisions, Iranians, Tajiks, Turks, Greeks, Pashtuns, other Central Asian Muslims, and the Muslims of South Asia have greatly appreciated his spiritual legacy for the past seven centuries. His poems have been widely translated into many of the world's languages and transposed into various formats. Rumi has been described as the most popular poet and the best selling poet in the United States. Rumi's works are written mostly in Persian, but occasionally he also used Turkish, Arabic, and Greek in his verse. His Masnavi, Mathnawi, composed in Konya, is considered one of the greatest poems of the Persian language. His works are widely read today in their original language across Greater Iran and the Persian-speaking world. Translations of his works are very popular, most notably in Turkey, Azerbaijan, the United States, and South Asia. His poetry has influenced not only Persian literature, but also Turkish, Ottoman Turkish, Azerbaijani, as well as the literature of some other Turkic, Iranian, and Indo-Aryan languages including Shagatai, Urdu, and Pashto. He is most commonly called Rumi in English. His full name is Jalal ad-Din Muhammad Baki, or Jalal ad-Din Muhammad Rumi. Jalal ad-Din is an Arabic name meaning glory of the faith. Baki and Rumi are his nisbis, meaning from Balsh and from Rum, Roman Anatolia, respectively. According to the authoritative Rumi biographer Franklin Lewis of the University of Chicago, Tihi Anatolian Peninsula which had belonged to the Byzantine, or Eastern Roman Empire, had only relatively recently been conquered by Muslims and even when it came to be controlled by Turkish Muslim rulers, it was still known to Arabs, Persians and Turks as the geographical area of Rum. As such, there are a number of historical personages born in or associated with Anatolia known as Rumi, a word borrowed from Arabic literally meaning Roman in which context Roman refers to subjects of the Byzantine Empire or simply to people living in or things associated with Anatolia. He is widely known by the sobriquet Malana, Malana, in Iran and popularly known as in Turkey. Malana, is a term of Arabic origin, meaning our master. The term Malawi, Malawi, Persian, and, Turkish, also of Arabic origin, meaning my master, is also frequently used for him. Rumi was born to native Persian-speaking parents, originally from the Balsh, in present-day Afghanistan. He was born either in Waqsh, a village on the Vikhsh River in present-day Tajikistan, or in the city of Balsh, in present-day Afghanistan. Greater Balsh was at that time a major center of Persian culture and Sufism had developed there for several centuries. The most important influences upon Rumi, besides his father, were the Persian poets Adar and Sinai. Rumi expresses his appreciation, Adder was the spirit, Sinai his eyes twain, and in time thereafter, came we in their train and mentions in another poem, Adder has traversed the seven cities of love, we are still at the turn of one street. His father was also connected to the spiritual lineage of Najm al-Din Kubra. Rumi lived most of his life under the Persian 8 Seljuk Sultanate of Rum, where he produced his works and died in 1273 AD. He was buried in Konya and his shrine became a place of pilgrimage. Upon his death, his followers and his son Sultan Walad founded the Mevlevi Order, also known as the Order of the Whirling Dervishes, famous for the Sufi dance known as the Sama Ceremony. He was laid to rest beside his father, and over his remains a shrine was erected. A hagiographical account of him is described in Shamsuddin Amata Flaki's Manaki Balarifan, written between 1318 and 1353. This biography needs to be treated with care as it contains both legends and facts about Rumi. For example, Professor Franklin Lewis of the University of Chicago, author of the most complete biography on Rumi, has separate sections for the hagiographical biography of Rumi and the actual biography about him. Rumi's father was, a theologian, jurist and a mystic from Balsh, who was also known by the followers of Rumi as Sultan al ulama or Sultan of the Scholars. The popular hagiographical assertions that have claimed the family's descent from the Caliph Abu Bekr does not hold on closer examination and is rejected by modern scholars. 
The claim of maternal descent from the Karasmsha for Rumi or his father is also seen as a non-historical hagiographical tradition designed to connect the family with royalty, but this claim is rejected for chronological and historical reasons. The most complete genealogy offered for the family stretches back to six or seven generations to famous Hanafi jurists. We do not learn the name of Baha al-Din's mother in the sources, only that he referred to her as Mami, colloquial Persian for Mama, and that she was a simple woman who lived to the 1200s. The mother of Rumi was Mumina Khatun. The profession of the family for several generations was that of Islamic preachers of the liberal Hanafirite, and this family tradition was continued by Rumi, C.S. Fihi Mafi and Seven Sermons, and Sultan Walad, see Marif Walidi for examples of his everyday sermons and lectures. When the Mongols invaded Central Asia sometime between 1215 and 1220, Baha'u'ddin Walad, with his whole family and a group of disciples, set out westwards. According to hagiographical account, which is not agreed upon by all Rumi scholars, Rumi encountered one of the most famous mystic Persian poets, Adar, in the Iranian city of Nishapur, located in the province of Khorasan. Adar immediately recognized Rumi's spiritual eminence. He saw the father walking ahead of the son and said, here comes a sea followed by an ocean. He gave the boy his A.S.Arnama, a book about the entanglement of the soul and the material world. This meeting had a deep impact on the 18-year-old Rumi and later on became the inspiration for his works. From Nishapur, Walad and his entourage set out for Baghdad, meeting many of the scholars and Sufis of the city. From Baghdad they went to Hejaz and performed the pilgrimage at Mecca. The migrating caravan then passed through Damascus, Malatya, Erzincan, Shivas, Kaiseri, and Nide. They finally settled in Karaman for seven years, Rumi's mother and brother both died there. In 1225, Rumi married Gauhar Kachin in Karaman. They had two sons, Sultan Walad and Allah Eddin Chalabi. When his wife died, Rumi married again and had a son, Amir Alim Chalabi, and a daughter, Malika Kachin. On May 1, 1228, most likely as a result of the insistent invitation of Alauddin Kikobad, ruler of Anatolia, Bahauddin came and finally settled in Konya in Anatolia within the westernmost territories of the Seljuk Sultanate of Rum. Bahauddin became the head of the Madrasa, religious school, and when he died, Rumi, aged 25, inherited his position as the Islamic Mulvi. One of Bahauddin's students, Syed Baranuddin Mahakik Termizi, continued to train Rumi in the Sharia as well as the Tariqa, especially that of Rumi's father. For nine years, Rumi practiced Sufism as a disciple of Baranuddin until the latter died in 1240 or 1241. Rumi's public life then began, he became an Islamic jurist, issuing fatwas and giving sermons in the mosques of Konya. He also served as a Mulvi, Islamic teacher, and taught his adherents in the Madrasa. During this period, Rumi also traveled to Damascus and is said to have spent four years there. It was his meeting with the dervish Shamsi Tabrizi on November 15, 1244 that completely changed his life. From an accomplished teacher and jurist, Rumi was transformed into an ascetic. Shams had traveled throughout the Middle East searching and praying for someone who could endure my company. A voice said to him, What will you give in return? Shams replied, My head. The voice then said, The one you seek is Jalaluddin of Konya. On the night of December 5, 1248, as Rumi and Shams were talking, Shams was called to the back door. He went out, never to be seen again. It is rumored that Shams was murdered with the connivance of Rumi's son, Alauddin. If so, Shams indeed gave his head for the privilege of mystical friendship. Rumi's love for, and his bereavement at the death of, Shams found their expression in an outpouring of lyric poems, Devani Shams eat it breezy. He himself went out searching for Shams and journeyed again to Damascus. There, he realized Mulana had been spontaneously composing guzzles, Persian poems, and these had been collected in the Divana Kabir or Divan Shams Tabrizi. Rumi found another companion in Salah ad Arkab, a goldsmith. After Salahuddin's death, Rumi's scribe and favorite student, Husami Chalabi, assumed the role of Rumi's companion. One day, the two of them were wandering through the Marim vineyards outside Konya when Hussam described to Rumi an idea had had, if you were to write a book like the Ilahinama of Sinai or the Manticut Tire of Adder, it would become the companion of many troubadours. They would fill their hearts from your work and compose music to accompany it. Rumi smiled and took out a piece of paper on which were written the opening 18 lines of his Masnavi, beginning with Hussam implored Rumi to write more. 
Rumi spent the next 12 years of his life in Anatolia dictating the six volumes of this masterwork, the Masnavi, to his son. In December 1273, Rumi fell ill, he predicted his own death and composed the well-known Ghazal, which begins with the verse. Rumi died on December 17, 1273 in Konya, his body was interred beside that of his father, and a splendid shrine, the Yeshil Torbe, Green Tomb, today the Mevlana Museum, was erected over his place of burial. His epitaph reads, Georgian Queen Gurku Hachin was a close friend of Rumi. She was the one who sponsored the construction of his tomb in Konya. The 13th century Mevlana Mausoleum, with its mosque, dance hall, dervish living quarters, school and tombs of some leaders of the Mevlevi order, continues to this day to draw pilgrims from all parts of the Muslim and non-Muslim world. Jalal al-Din who is also known as Rumi, was a philosopher and mystic of Islam. The general theme of Rumi's thought, like that of other mystic and Sufi poets of Persian literature, is that of Tawheed, union with the Beloved, from whom he sees himself as being cut off and aloof. His longing and desire to attain it is evident in the following poem from his book The Masnavi The Masnavi weaves fables, scenes from everyday life, Quranic revelations and exegesis, and metaphysics into a vast and intricate tapestry. In the East, it is said of him that he was not a prophet, but surely, he has brought a scripture. Rumi believed passionately in the use of music, poetry and dance as a path for reaching God. For Rumi, music helped devotees to focus their whole being on the divine and to do this so intensely that the soul was both destroyed and resurrected. It was from these ideas that the practice of whirling dervishes developed into a ritual form. His teachings became the base for the order of the Medlevi, which his son Sultan Walad organized. Rumi encouraged Sama, listening to music and turning or doing the sacred dance. In the Medlevi tradition, Sama represents a mystical journey of spiritual ascent through mind and love to the perfect one. In this journey, the seeker symbolically turns towards the truth, grows through love, abandons the ego, finds the truth and arrives at the perfect. The seeker then returns from this spiritual journey, with greater maturity, to love and to be of service to the whole of creation without discrimination with regard to beliefs, races, classes and nations. In other verses in the Masnavi, Rumi describes in detail the universal message of love. Rumi's favorite musical instrument was the neigh, reed flute. Rumi's poetry is often divided into various categories, the quatrains, rubaiyat, and odes, guzzel, of the divan, the six books of the Masnavi. The prose works are divided into the discourses, the letters, and the seven sermons. Rumi belongs to the class of Islamic philosophers which include Ibn Arabi and Malasadra. These transcendental philosophers are often studied together in traditional schools of Irfan philosophy and theosophy throughout the Muslim world. Rumi embeds his theosophy, transcendental philosophy, like a string through the beads of his poems and stories. His main point and emphasis is the unity of being. It is undeniable that Rumi was a Muslim scholar and took Islam seriously. Nonetheless, the depth of his spiritual vision extended beyond narrow understanding sectarian concerns. One Rubaiyat reads according to the Quran, Prophet Muhammad is a mercy sent by God to the Allah Amin to all creation, including humanity overall. In regards to this, Rumi states, The light of Muhammad does not abandon his Zoroastrian or Jew in the world. May the shade of his good fortune shine upon everyone. He brings all of those who err old astray into the way out of the desert. Rumi, however, asserts the supremacy of Islam by stating, The light of Muhammad has become a thousand branches, of knowledge, a thousand so that both this world and the next have been seized from end to end. If Muhammad rips the veil open from a single such branch, thousands of monks and priests will tear the string of false belief from around their waists. Many of Rumi's poems suggest the importance of outward religious observance and the primacy of the Quran. Rumi states, Poem greater than I am the servant of the Quran as long as I have life. I am the dust on the path of Muhammad, the chosen one. If anyone quotes anything except this from my sayings, I am quit of him and outraged by these words. Less than slash poem. Rumi also states. On the first page of the Masnavi, Rumi states, This is the book of the Masnavi, and it is the roots of the roots of the roots of the Islamic religion and it is the explainer of the Quran. Sayyid Hossein Nasser states one of the greatest living authorities on Rumi in Persia today, Hadi Hari, has shown in an unpublished work that some 6,000 verses of the Divan and the Math Nawi are practically direct translations of Quranic verses into Persian poetry. Rumi states in his Divan the Sufi is hanging on to Muhammad, like Abu Bakr.
His Mas Nivi contains anecdotes and stories derived largely from the Quran and the Hadith, as well as everyday tales. Rumi's poetry forms the basis of much classical Iranian and Afghan music. Contemporary classical interpretations of his poetry are made by Muhammad Reza Shajarian, Shiram Natsari, Davudazad, the three from Iran, and Ustad Muhammad Hashem Cheshti, Afghanistan. To many modern Westerners, his teachings are one of the best introductions to the philosophy and practice of Sufism. In the West Shiram Jiva has been teaching, performing and sharing the translations of the poetry of Rumi for nearly 20 years and has been instrumental in spreading Rumi's legacy in the English-speaking parts of the world. Pakistan's national poet, Muhammad Iqbal, was also inspired by Rumi's works and considered him to be his spiritual leader, addressing him as per Rumi in his poems, the honorific per literally means old man, but in the Sufi-slash-mystic context it means founder, master, or guide. Sharam Shiva asserts that Rumi is able to verbalize the highly personal and often confusing world of personal growth and development in a very clear and direct fashion. He does not offend anyone, and he includes everyone. Today, Rumi's poems can be heard in churches, synagogues, Zen monasteries, as well as in the downtown New York art slash performance slash music scene. According to Professor Majid M. Naimi, Rumi's life and transformation provide true testimony and proof that people of all religions and backgrounds can live together in peace and harmony. Rumi's visions, words, and life teach us how to reach inner peace and happiness so we can finally stop the continual stream of hostility and hatred and achieve true global peace and harmony. Rumi's work has been translated into many of the world's languages, including Russian, German, Urdu, Turkish, Arabic, Bengali, French, Italian, and Spanish, and is being presented in a growing number of formats, including concerts, workshops, readings, dance performances, and other artistic creations. The English interpretations of Rumi's poetry by Coleman Barks have sold more than half a million copies worldwide, and Rumi is one of the most widely read poets in the United States. Sharam Shiva Book Rending the Veil, Literal and Poetic Translations of Rumi, 1995, Home Press, is the recipient of the Benjamin Franklin Award. Recordings of Rumi poems have made it to the USA's Billboard's Top 20 list. A selection of American author Deepak Chopra's editing of the translations by Farid Onki of Rumi's love poems has been performed by Hollywood personalities such as Madonna, Goldie Hawn, Philip Glass, and Demi Moore. There is a famous landmark in northern India, known as Rumi Gate, situated in Lucknow, the capital of Uttar Pradesh, named for Rumi. Rumi and his mausoleum were depicted on the reverse of the 5,000 Turkish lira banknotes of 1981-1994. These cultural, historical and linguistic ties between Rumi and Iran have made Rumi an iconic Iranian poet, and some of the most important Rumi scholars including Foruz Anfar, Naini, Sabes Wari, etc., have come from modern Iran. Rumi's poetry is displayed on the walls of many cities across Iran, sung in Persian music, and read in school books. The Mului Sufi order was founded in 1273 by Rumi's followers after his death. His first successor in the rectorship of the order was Husam Chalabi himself, after whose death in 1284 Rumi's younger and only surviving son, Sultan Walad, died 1312, popularly known as author of the mystical Matnawi Rabab Nama, or the Book of the Rabab was installed as Grand Master of the Order. The leadership of the order has been kept within Rumi's family in Konin uninterruptedly since Sethan. The Mului Sufis, also known as whirling dervishes, believe in performing their dikr in the form of Sama. During the time of Rumi, as attested in the Manaki Balerfin of Aflaki, his followers gathered for musical and turning practices. According to tradition, Rumi was himself a notable musician who played the Rabab. Although his favorite instrument was the Ne or Reed flute. The music accompanying the Sama consists of settings of poems from the Matnawi and Devani Kabir, or of Sultan Walad's poems. The Malawiya was a well established Sufi order in the Ottoman Empire, and many of the members of the order served in various official positions of the caliphate. The center for the Medlevi was in Konya. There is also a Mului monastery, Darga, in Istanbul near the Galata Tower, in which the Sama is performed and accessible to the public. The Mului order issues an invitation to people of all backgrounds. During Ottoman times, the Mevlevi produced a number of notable poets and musicians, including Sheikh Ghalib, Ismail Rusuhi Didi of Ankara, Esrar Didi, Haed Afanda, and Gavsi Didi, who are all buried at the Galata Mului Khana, Turkish, Mevlevi Hain, in Istanbul. Music, especially that of the Ney 
plays an important part in the Mevlevi. With the foundation of the modern, secular Republic of Turkey, Mustafa Kemal Ataturk removed religion from the sphere of public policy and restricted it exclusively to that of personal morals, behavior and faith. On December 13, 1925, a law was passed closing all the TKS, Dervish Lodges, and Zawiyas, Chief Dervish Lodges, and the centers of veneration to which visits, Zayarat, were made. Istanbul alone had more than 250 TKS as well as small centers for gatherings of various fraternities, this law dissolved the Sufi orders, prohibited the use of mystical names, titles and costumes pertaining to their titles, impounded the order's assets, and banned their ceremonies and meetings. The law also provided penalties for those who tried to re-establish the orders. Two years later, in 1927, the Mausoleum of Mevlana in Konya was allowed to reopen as a museum. In the 1950s, the Turkish government began allowing the whirling dervishes to perform once a year in Konya. The Mulana festival is held over two weeks in December, its culmination is on 17th of December, the Urs of Mulana, anniversary of Rumi's death, called Sabe Arus, Persian meaning nuptial night, the night of Rumi's union with God. In 1974, the whirling dervishes were permitted to travel to the West for the first time. In 2005, UNESCO proclaimed the Mevlevi Sama Ceremony of Turkey as one of the masterpieces of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity. As Edward G. Brown noted, the three most prominent mystical Persian poets Rumi, Sinai and Adar were all Sunni Muslims and their poetry abounds with praise for the first two caliphs Abu Bekr and Umar ibn al-Khattab. According to Anne-Marie Schimmel, the tendency among Shia authors to anachronistically include leading mystical poets such as Rumi and Adar among their own ranks became stronger after the introduction of Twelver Shia as the state religion in the Safavid Empire in 1501. In Afghanistan, Rumi is known as Maulana, in Turkey as Mevlana, and in Iran as Molavi. At the proposal of the permanent delegations of Afghanistan, Iran, and Turkey, and is approved by its executive board and general conference in conformity with its mission of constructing in the minds of men the defenses of peace, UNESCO was associated with the celebration, in 2007 of the 800th anniversary of Rumi's birth. The commemoration at UNESCO itself took place on September 6, 2007. UNESCO issued a medal in Rumi's name in the hope that it would prove an encouragement to those who are engaged in research on and dissemination of Rumi's ideas and ideals, which would, in turn, enhance the diffusion of the ideals of UNESCO. The Afghan Ministry of Culture and Youth established a national committee which organized an international seminar to celebrate the birth and life of the great ethical philosopher and world-renowned poet. This grand gathering of the intellectuals, diplomats, and followers of Mulana was held in Kabul and in Balsh, the Mulana's place of birth. On September 30, 2007, Iranian school bells were rung throughout the country in honor of Mulana. Also in that year, Iran held a Rumi week from 26 October to 2nd of November. An international ceremony and conference were held in Tehran. The event was opened by the Iranian president and the chairman of the Iranian parliament. Scholars from 29 countries attended the events, and 450 articles were presented at the conference. Iranian musician Sharam Natsuri was awarded the Legion Hunter in Iran's House of Music Award in 2007 for his renowned works on Rumi masterpieces. 2007 was declared as the International Rumi Year by UNESCO. Also on September 30, 2007, Turkey celebrated Rumi's 800th birthday with a giant whirling dervish ritual performance of the Sama, which was televised using 48 cameras and broadcast live in eight countries. Ertuğrul Gane, of the Ministry of Culture and Tourism, stated, 300 dervishes are scheduled to take part in this ritual, making it the largest performance of Sama in history. The Maulana Rumi Review, is published annually by the Center for Persian and Iranian Studies at the University of Exeter in collaboration with the Rumi Institute, Nicosia, Cyprus, and Archetype Books, Cambridge. The first volume was published in 2010, and it has come out annually since then. According to the principal editor of the journal, Leonard Lewison, although a number of major Islamic poets easily rival the likes of Dante, Shakespeare and Milton in importance and output, they still enjoy only a marginal literary fame in the West because the works of Arabic and Persian thinkers, writers and poets are considered as negligible, frivolous, tawdry sideshows beside the grand narrative of the Western canon. It is the aim of the Maulana Rumi Review to redress this carelessly inattentive approach to world literature, which is something far more serious than a minor faux pas committed by the Western literary imagination.
Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.